in periods of panic, you go to the highest quality assets in the sector, market, or country that you are looking at, and you pounce aggressively. This is an embodiment of pure panic and capitulation. This, this person said, I should have never bought BABA. We'll be selling everything at a 70% loss. I'm crying ATM. I guess that means at the moment. And then some other person chimed in, or you could hold it. Is there a particular reason why you need to sell? And they said, no particular reason, just lost faith in BABA and don't want the losses to go to 100%. Okay, so this is exactly what creates the swings in markets. Uh, just lost faith. There's nothing here like, oh, I believe the business is impaired 50% more than my original analysis on the basis of X, Y, and Z. There's a new cl cloud competitor that the government is sponsoring or some some something that would be like a mathematical, like, like um, Seth Klarman says contrarian streak and a calculator there's no calculator in just lost faith there, nothing changed to in the intrinsic business nothing changed to the percentage of ownership in that company nothing changed in terms of what this business would sell at in a private market transaction and it take private transaction there's no way it goes out uh under 250 dollars a share or 300 dollars a share even despite all of the pessimism and cynicism when you're dealing in quality and you're dealing with these extremes to recognize that panic and that's why you have to be ready to pounce and you never are in your first cycle this is probably a first cycle person it's usually by the second or third cycle when you've seen this over and over again that you know in periods of panic you go to the highest quality assets in the sector market or country that you are looking at and you pounce aggressively. And this is no different than what you saw from the um, uh, Legatum CIO, uh, Philip Vassiliou, uh, and um, uh, Christopher and Richard Chandler, who turned the 10 million into 5 billion. Every single instance, they were in these markets that no one wanted to touch at the moment. And when they turned, they turned hard and they made multi-baggers and then just repeated the process. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, Alibaba still has 36.7% share of the cloud market, which is expected to triple over the next few years. With operating margin at scale, that could be add as much as 60% of new operating income above peak levels when the stock traded at 319. So we, we've gone through this in recent weeks. Uh, you know, uh, Ali Cloud is where AWS was in 2016 at about $11 billion of revenue with low operating margin. AWS is now 62 billion with 29% operating margin. And we think that uh, Alibaba can hold that trajectory because they have a higher share in the markets that they operate in. And uh, China is five to seven years behind the US in terms of uh, digitization, which is a high priority of the government, uh, which is now a tailwind for Alibaba, which was a headwind uh, in the past. Now, China, and the semiconductor things are uh, is fantastic for Alibaba because they're developing AI chips for the cloud and the government likes any company that develops chips now that they can't get the ones that they want from the United States. This is even in the event e-commerce business stagnates in coming years, which is not our base case. Revenues have grown 800% and earnings 500% since the IPO in 2014 and the stock is trading below that price. So you get a business that's 800 times, 800%, eight times larger or five times larger for less than the price that it IPO'd. But what changed in that 24 hours about the business? What changed about the earnings growth? What changed about the cloud opportunity? What changed about the Ant financial valuation? What changed? Absolutely nothing. Same boss, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. So for everyone that's uh, you know worried about Xi Jinping, it's the same guy who's been in power for the last 10 years. And we're gonna distinguish why China stocks have been in the gutter and, and actually dis discern that it hasn't just been Chinese stocks. It's been a lot of stocks that are correlated with a strong dollar. So um, uh, here it is. Outside of this week's noise, Alibaba has not been nothing but a leveraged currency trade. Let me repeat that. Outside of this week's noise, BABA has been nothing but a leveraged currency trade. When the US dollar goes down, emerging markets, Alibaba, uh, FXI, which is a Chinese uh, ETF index, and KWEB, which is the Internet China ETF, ETF, go up. And when the dollar goes up, emerging markets, BABA, China, and China Internet go down. Note, emerging markets, BABA, not only emerging markets in BABA, but also 
Warren Buffett-backed Brazilian stocks like Newbank and Stoneco, which are consumer, uh, Stoneco is consumer credit, Newbank is uh, online banking in Brazil. And what, what happens here? So let's look. This chart here is the US dollar. When it goes down, what happens? Emerging markets rally like it's going out of style. KWeb rallies like it's going out of style. BABA rallies like it's going out of style. Uh, and uh, these two Brazilian stocks weren't, weren't uh, Buffett back stocks weren't around, weren't public back then. But then what happens? The dollar goes up and what happens automatically? Emerging markets collapse, uh, China internet collapses, BABA collapses. The dollar uh, levels off, all of these things level off, level off, do nothing for a few years. The dollar peaks and goes down. You have the biggest rally in emerging markets. Uh, you know, in a year, you have like 100% return in the index, in BABA, in all of these different things. Oh, and by the way, as the dollar comes down, what goes up is Stone Co., which is Brazilian. It has nothing to do with Xi Jinping's policies or lack thereof. And then guess what happens? In... Um, June of 2021, the dollar, well, actually, it starts going up in January of 2000, 2021. The dollar starts going up, little fake out. Guess what happens? The emerging markets peak and roll over. Uh, China internet peaks and rolls over. Baba peaks and rolls over. And what does the market attribute it to fully? Xi Jinping caused all of these stocks to go down. Well, if it was Xi Jinping only, why did the emerging markets collapse? Why did Warren Buffett's Stone Co., which is a Brazilian consumer credit company, completely collapse exactly the same way that KWeb and emerging markets as a whole, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, etc., and Alibaba? Why did they all crash at the same time and New Bank crash because the dollar was strong? And that's the key. And we've been talking about that in the past, but the the correlation really hit me over the weekend when I was, you know, we spent a lot of talking about G's policies and uh, stimulus and all that stuff. This is going to change Brazilian equities, uh, Buffett-backed Brazilian equities, Alibaba, uh, KWeb, emerging markets as a whole. This is going to hockey stick and go to the moon just like it did every time once the dollar stops going up and reverses. And we think we're there. We're going to talk about why. If all of the decline in Chinese stocks is attributable to G. The, uh, or uh, someone commented, I should say, she, not Z, she, uh, the CCP and zero COVID policy. Why did Buffett back Brazilian stocks, Stone Co. and New Bank suffer the same fate during the same time? She has no effect on the Brazilian consumer. And there it is. This week, she vowed to grow China to a medium level developed country by 2035, which according to economists requires an average 4.7% annual growth rate going forward. That does not happen with continued restrictive policies. Zero COVID policy or not, eventually the virus will die out on its own in China, just as it did in 1918 to 1920 in the US, with no vaccines, by the way, never mind vaccines that don't work like they have in China, but no vaccines. Uh, best guess they had are having their third and final mini wave uh, like in 1919. So they had this in 2020, then they had their second big one. They're probably through this now or at the tail end of this, maybe maybe right here. Uh, and it'll just die out eventually on its own. While everyone watches Xi and compares Xi and talk, compares him to Mao, I'll be watching the US dollar. When that tra trajectory changes, Baba will turn from being a drag on performance to being a contributor to performance that's less likely in 2022. Although we do have a lot of catalysts before the end of the year. Um, uh, if we'll see November 2nd with the Fed. Uh, and if they do signal that November 2nd is the last 75 hike and it's going lower, uh, then you're going to see continued weakness in the dollar. Uh, yields are going to tighten up and, um, and, and, and emerging markets are going to get a bid. Then you've got uh, earnings coming up for um, Alibaba, which if you remember, while the country was shut down in Q2, they were surprisingly strong. So that will be good. 
Then you have the uh, dual primary listing in Hong Kong, which will bring $30 billion of new buyers in before the end of the year. Imagine you know, seeing the Amazon truck come up to your house every single day, but not being able to buy the stock for the last 10 years. Well, that's what mainland China buyers are like. So whether we'll see if institutions start to run front run that new 30 billion of buying demand that's supposed to occur, uh, that uh, primary Hong Kong listing is supposed to occur by the end of this year. Then you've got the delisting auditors, the PCAOB. My guess is if Xi and Biden meet at the G20 in November, my guess is that gets completed before the end of the year. Uh, it takes delisting in the U.S. off the table, which could be another catalyst for the stock. So there are some things that could contribute. Uh, this this por portion of the portfolio could contribute before the end of the year. But the dollar move is, is uh, you know, could start in earnest before year end, but very likely in 2023 and 2024.